So as we're making our way very comfortably down onto the ground, give your body a couple of good breaths just to have some good oxygen flow for kind of kickstarting our system. The idea that we'll start to build in the back of our mind already is the fun idea of us choosing how we want to wake up in the morning. Oftentimes when we wake up first thing, the alarm is what kicks us off. It kind of startles us out of bed and we have to go, you know, rush to turn it off as soon as possible. And, and already from that energy, it's like we're shushing the world. We're telling the world, go away. I need to. I need more, I need more rest, I need more quiet, I need more self-care. And, and it's like, man, I'm already getting out of bed. And oftentimes that's how our energy of the day gets started. And then we turn on, I don't know, the news or we, we open up social media. And it's like it fills our brain with, with all sorts of thoughts that are not necessarily ours. And it kind of sometimes feels like it takes the power away from us. It's like there's so much heaviness and it's, it's like we, it's inevitable almost to feel that way a lot. And so what we're doing as we're traveling through our class today is doing all sorts of things to kind of clear out our energy, to clear out our mind, especially getting that heart pumping, get, getting muscles moving, and then taking really good stretches just to kind of let, imagine that we're like pulling those muscles long, letting that weird energy sink out. So that by the time we get to the end of class, we take our final Shavasana and we wake up after that. It's like we're, we're choosing this go around, how we want to wake up. We're choosing what we want to do with this day. We're taking our power back. And we're realizing we have infinite potential and we have all sorts of creative energy to turn this day into whatever we want it to be. And so that type of power, that energy, that clean slate, is what will be guiding us through our practice today. And so, to start clearing up our energy, let's begin nice and easy. The knees will start to come into the chest. We'll place a hand on each knee. And just let those hips start to take some easy cycles, rocking left and right. Anything that feels helpful for low back, for hips, give it a few breaths. Nice and easy here, we'll get started with kind of like a modified version of bicycles. What we're gonna do is clasp our hands around the left knee, pull that side in. This free right leg gets a chance to stretch all the way up to the sky, feel that hamstring start to pull those fibers long. And then very slowly lower that right leg all the way down to the ground. Once it's right above the earth, Bring that right knee in, switch the hands, give that side a good hug, left leg up to sky, feel those muscles stretch, begin to lower it down, over right above the earth, and just as slow like that will begin our first thing. Take your time, establish the stretches for sure. Pulling in the knee that's in, letting the hamstring stretch out that's up, is that very slow modified bicycle. It's like some of those initial stretches we take first thing in the morning. And the legs and the hips start to be part of our journey. Take one more of these to each side.
Good. When both knees are back in, let's take a nice twist. Both knees fall to left. The knees don't necessarily have to stay touching. They could absolutely be separated. That would back us out of the stretch a little bit. Let the arms extend to each side. Really what we're trying to find is the muscles set up in a good stretch. And then from that muscular elongation, we start to elongate the breath also, using our breath to kind of massage our intestines. A nice inhale, long exhale. And as the knees come up, let's start to tilt the legs over to the other side. I love starting off gradually like this, so we're not immediately throwing our body into crazy stuff. Start to help those muscles the fibers, the different areas of our body realize, okay, so this is what it is to be coordinated today. I'm trying out this, this idea of coordination. And it's like each breath we take is like an eraser on the chalkboard. One swipe at a time, getting our, our chalkboard clean. Because if we don't clean it, there is all sorts of stuff that will start to fill it up. Good, so take one more inhale. With our exhale, hips are turned to the ground. Arms can either stay open here on the floor or they can slide in closer to the hips, your choice. And from here, let's take a few more rounds of bicycles, this time going quite a bit faster. So still the same thing, a nice hamstring stretch in the lower, hamstring and lower. If I'm ever going too fast, you can change the pace or alternatively, you can increase the pace. It's up to you. The big thing that we're looking for is the breath flowing with us the whole time. <sighs> like if we don't breathe, how are we gonna energize our body? How are we gonna clean our slate? It's very possible some of you might drop out before this, but if we're doing okay, let's do another 10 to each side. And nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, good work. Knees back into the chest. Let's take another twist, both knees to left. Arms spread open. This time in the twist, the top leg, that right one, gets a chance to stretch long to the side. So let it stretch out and drop to the ground. If the left hand, if you like how this feels, slide the left hand up the back side of the leg. Maybe it stops at the calf. Maybe it goes all the way to the toes. It's not super important. It's mostly about how this feels. Being hamstring involved, still a nice twist and spiral for the spine. Enjoy another good inhale. Exhale, release, bending that knee, twist it over to the second side, straighten the top leg, that left one. And if it felt good before, slide the right hand down.
We'll take another inhale. Exhale. When our knees bend back, return hips to the ground, plant the feet on the earth, and we'll take some bridge poses. So hands are in by the hips. Inhale, roll hips up, one vertebrae at a time, lift. Exhale, roll back down. Just flow with the breath like that. Inhale, whatever speed that is. And exhale, back down. Start to feel more and more of these muscle groups joining the party with us. Take another five, four, three, two, one, and then rise up one more bow this time and stay. If you can clasp hands behind the back, try to clasp, even walking shoulders under if possible. From that tilted orientation, it's almost like we flipped an hourglass upside down, like we're changing our perspective entirely, bring out energy that was only one direction before. Sometimes it even feels good to kind of shake the hips out. Like there's a lot of stuck energy in that spot, so kind of shake it free. Good, take another inhale. And exhale, release the hands, roll the hips back to earth. And let's allow both legs to go up to the sky. So from here, I oftentimes find it helpful to tuck the thumbs under the hips. That helps my low back stay absolutely glued to the ground. We don't ever want to arch that low back. So legs are glued together in a thigh stuck. The legs are trying to straighten out as much as possible to include those last little fibers of length. And then we drop the legs partway down. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale. Exhale. If you can even bring the legs in past 90 degrees, kind of bring it in toward you just a little bit. Maybe the hips do a little bump up, just a hair. Again, don't make sure low back is not lifting off the ground. So don't go that low. We're doing okay, let's take five, four, three, two, one. Amazing efforts. Let's allow both feet to drop back down, kind of by the glutes, kind of like bridge pose. This time, right leg goes straight up to sky. So from here, we're going to lift up the hips, keeping that leg trying to stick straight up and the lower hips down. Go for another nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, right ankle to left thigh, give it a hug around the left. Momentary break. Breath flows easily. Anytime we're in these breaks, that's a chance to kind of let the heart calm down. Let the energy have a chance to kind of sort itself out with deep breaths. As this right ankle releases, take it into bridge pose and then left leg straight up to sky. From here, rising up and down. Nine, eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. Ankle to thigh, hug around right side. Inhales, exhales, and then as we release, let the legs play open like a huge figure X on the ground. Just feel how the arms up above head like this makes the rib cage arch just a hair. So how that pulls the rectus abdominis just a little bit into the stretch. Kind of a nice break for some of that energy. Two or three more breaths, relaxing. And then our next exercise is in two parts before we switch sides. So the first part is right knee and left elbow touching above our torso, so cross lateral action, and then we'll return back to the ground. From there, straight arm and leg join, and then they lower back down. Then we can switch sides. So opposite elbow and knee, and then straight arm and leg, and then we can switch. I like to try to make sure that whatever I'm dropping down has a little bit of control. So I'm not just like collapsing down to the ground. I'm trying to lower it nice and slow. And in that way, I'm including those muscle fibers all the way to that final moment. Good. Let's do another three on each side if you're doing okay. And two. And one. Beautiful. Drop back down to a rest when you're there. Sometimes on motions like that, we get into our neck a little bit. The neck is hard because the, the neck, you know, it's so much weight. The head is heavy. Let's take a moment for the neck to stretch. We're just going to clasp our hands behind the back of the head and then use the strength of the arms to lift that this limp head all the way up into chin to the chest. Nice little neck stretch. So sometimes when I'm here, it feels like the neck needs just a little bit of the sideways action. So you can kind of tilt the head just a hair to one side, then a hair to the other side, or you can always stay still right in the center. It depends on what you feel. A good inhale. And exhale, we'll start to drop the head back down. Feet come back into bridge pose shape. Hands on the floor by the hips. This time, right straight leg slides out long to the ground. So we're gonna lift straight leg up to sky and then hips lift, hips down, leg down. Let's go for nine of those, up, up, down, down. Seven and six, five and four, three, 
and two, and one. Good, taking a little break, right leg goes straight up into our hands and just pull that leg in until you're in a nice hamstring stretch. You could have the toes pointed, you could have the toes flexed, fill into it. And releasing right foot to the ground, left leg slides long, hands are resting down. From here, left leg up to sky and hip lift. And down and down. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. Good, straight leg up to sky, grab onto it. Keep that hamstring in a stretch. Point of toes, flex foot, you choose. Another inhale, exhale, continue to hold on to left leg, right leg hovers right above ground. We're gonna do scissor switches. So right leg up, you can grab on, lower the other leg down, up and down. So know that you've got a couple of options with the difficulty level here. So grabbing onto each leg each time is the easier option. If you feel like you wanna make it harder at this point in class, Hands drop all the way down. It's just the strength of the legs during the switches. Here's 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Good work, drop left leg to the floor, right hand, uh, hands around the right knee. Pull that knee into the chest for a moment. Try to keep this left leg solid so the hip doesn't arch up. Go ahead and take that knee into a twist across the body. And as we're here, just enjoying these couple of stretches, feel the body alive within the system. Feel that heart, feel the lungs, good things happening for sure. Okay, hip down and then right leg down. Hug around left knee, pull it in tight. Start to take it across the body. Putting up. Another inhale and exhale. Hips back to the ground, keep that left knee bent in. 
Hands go behind the back of the head, lifting the head up. And we're gonna twist our right elbow to that left knee, other leg hovers, and switch. One thing to do to make it easier is to point the leg at a higher angle. You also can play with the speed. So here's 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. Roll over onto your side body, the side that will face you inward toward me. So the head can just be resting down on that upper arm. You could also take your hand to support the head. At first, the knees are bent in. What we're gonna do is imagine this is a clamshell moving through molasses. It's like we're creating our own resistance. So the two hinges are hips and toes. The knees float up and then squeeze against that molasses to close them down. And nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, let it rest. Sometimes it's nice to kind of pound that hip out. Like there's definite spots that we're feeling right now. Good, so now straightening the legs, tuck it in like a banana shape, that angle. Top thigh rotates up as much as possible. What we're gonna do is a quick kick up with the top leg and then slowly lower it down. Let's do that quick kick, exhale up, inhale down. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. Let it rest for a moment. Even knees a little bent can feel nice. Okay, two more hot potatoes. Top leg hops in front, tapping twice, and then hop up, tap twice behind. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest for a moment. Okay, with this last one, top leg is about the height of the hip. Bottom leg tries to sweep under and then around, like tracing a half pipe. Eight, seven, six, here's five, four, three, two, one. Good, awesome. Come up to sit. That hip that we were just working on, that one that was on top, cradle that leg out. Give it a couple of good rocks. You don't have to, you could just hand up, hold on with hands. You could hold on all the way to the clasp. It's whatever's working for this hip. But kind of feel into that area, that intensity.
then drop this shin to try to stack on top of the other shin. If that lifts one of the hips up, just drop down the cross leg instead, and then find the hands on the floor. And try to ease your way forward. That will start to grab some of those glute muscles. Pull it right in with us into the stretch. You feel like your muscles are like clenching against it. Try to see if you can consciously help it relax. Ease our way up. That top leg. We're going to try to grab the opposite hand onto that foot. So it's kind of holding onto it in front of us for us. So if it's the left leg, it's gonna be right arm or vice versa. Good. If foot's too far, grab on around the calf instead. That's fine. But the idea is we're trying to cross this leg like in front of our body. So cross laterally. And then twist the rest of the spine and that should start to get us into that IT band. Good to open that side out. Good work. Take both hands onto the foot in front of you. Try to straighten the leg as much as possible, lifting it right up to our torso, that good hamstring stretch. Yep, you can always walk down to calf instead. Awesome efforts. Take another inhale. Good work. Exhale, release. So we have to do the other side. You have two ways. You can either face away from me or just switch your feet to be on the other side of your mat and you can still face toward me. So either way, we're, we should have that second hip up. Okay. So we start off with the clamshell one. Got our knees stacked. Move through molasses, knees lifting up. And squeeze, creating our own resistance. Here's nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, one. Let it rest for a moment, even pounding out the hip if you need to. Sometimes that's what kind of prepares us for the rest of the stuff. It's like, get that good oxygen flow, that blood flow right now. Okay. When you're ready, legs lengthen and banana. Slide in a little bit. Top thigh will rotate up. Exhale, quick kick up. Inhale, down. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three, two, and one. Good, let it rest for a moment. Getting close, we're almost there. Okay, so pop potatoes, tap twice in front, hop up, twice behind. Nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And rest for a moment. Give it a couple of breaths, and then we've got one last one on this side. Leg's gonna hover, 
Second leg does that U pipe. Up and then behind. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good work. Rest. Make our way up to sit. Now that second hip, let's cradle it out using hands or scooting to elbows your choice. You can take it fast, you can take it slow, do whatever that hip needs for this moment. Okay, when it starts to feel pretty good, let it drop to shin stack, unless you know you need to lower it to, to cross leg. And just kind of start to ease your body forward. It's kind of intense at first, so don't feel like you immediately have to go to that deep spot. Just kind of start to ease your body. If you feel things clenching up against the stretch, try to consciously let it relax. Okay, easing our way up. Opposite hand grabs the foot, or you can always go for calf instead. Try to let that leg straighten out in front and then cross it over your body as we start to kind of twist the rest of the spine. Feel that hip is easing, that IT band easing. And both hands grabbing on. Try to straighten the leg as much as possible, even walking your hands up further, further down if needed. And pull it right up into the stretch. Amazing efforts. Let's take both legs, just dropping them down in front of us. Knees can be bent or straight. Just give that spine a nice chance to relax forward. There's several different muscles that are included in the hamstrings. And sometimes the reason why the hamstrings are so hard to work with, at least toward the beginning, they get better over the period of, you know, a class, moving them, stretching them. One of the reasons why it's so hard at first is because when we have long periods of time without movement, sometimes the fascia kind of sticks to the other fascia. So we have to kind of break that sticking action before it'll really get to be able to move with us. Let's just enjoy two more deep breaths right here. Okay, so easing up into boat pose. Know that the easier version will be feet on the floor. Harder is floating. Hands holding on is again easier. Floating is harder. Um, what we're gonna do is take it to half boat. So we lower part way down, then bring it right back up. Let's try to repeat nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one, and take it into a nice cobbler. Letting that spine ease up and over.
Okay. We're heading to the final stretch of class. So we're gonna do a couple of things that are, um, you know, higher energy, higher challenge, and then kind of ease its way down until all we're doing is just some nice stretches to wrap ourselves up. So let's work our way onto our hands and knees. We're gonna take it all the way up into a downward facing dog. So tucking the toes, lift the hips up. From here, shift your shoulders forward into plank and lift it right back up down dog. Try to repeat that another seven. And six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good, drop down onto the knees, shake the wrist out for a moment. Just a little mini break. Beautiful, going back into plank. We're gonna try out a side plank, both heels drop to the left. Feet separated is easier, feet stacked is harder. Right hand tries to float up to the sky. Yep, great variation. Here's 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop down. Rock heels over to the other side. Choose your variation. And here's ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop down. Beautiful. Back up to down dog. Trying to hold the down dog, about five more breaths if possible. We're lowering to knees. Take a mini child pose, purposely letting those wrists have a little break. Blank slate, any of this weird stuff, get it right out. What we're gonna do is five um, cat cows with the lion's breath. So we're gonna inhale when we take our cat, exhale when we gaze up, stick the tongue out, and let the air out. Awesome, do four more. Let it right out. Three, two, One more. Awesome. Nice straight spine. Right leg stick straight back. If you can balance with left arm going forward, take that balance. Sometimes this is about what you can hold. If you're doing okay with this, take left elbow and knee to touch underneath and then straighten it right back out. Good, here's four. And three, two, and one. Awesome, hand drops down. Those toes, the right toes touch the earth and then the heel lifts up. Let's go for nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. Tuck the toes. Press back until you feel that right calf stretch. Good work, dropping to knees. One more set of that. So now second side, left leg, right arm, reaching out. Again, if the balance is, is challenging here, that's okay, core is working. Otherwise, together underneath, five, 
four, three, two, and one. Good, hand down, left toes touch floor, the lifts, our last thing here, here's nine, and eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Tuck the toes, push back until you feel the calf stretch. Okay, turn it into the regular downward facing dog. Let's float right leg up to sky. And send the right knee under and through into the pose. So we're gonna pause with this lifted position for a moment to give the front of that left hip a huge chance to stretch out. So keep that hip dropping down, heart rising up. If anybody likes to grab the back toes, that is an option, but you don't have to. Good. So as stretching, just another breath. Nice long exhale. And then we can lower to sleeping pigeon. Remember to keep the sacrum level. We're not completely dropping onto one hip. Good. And as we're heading to this last little segment of class, just enjoying some good stretches to wrap us up. And start to tune back into your breath. Oftentimes when we're doing such strength-based stuff, our breath is kind of just whatever we have to do to keep going. But as we're consciously stretching here, still trying to clear out our energy, bring us back to that blank slate, use the breath to help you. So for instance, if you needed to do a couple of those lion breaths, just to kind of intuitively clear out your system, clear out thoughts that have been here, you can even take some of those right here, just... Let it go. Sometimes that ujjayi breath is also useful. Just easing and breathing deep in the spots, maybe in the spots of old energy that we might be carrying around right here. Good. So let's ease out. We're going to choose a recovery pose. It might be down dog for some of us. Some of us, it might be just kneeling, whatever feels helpful. Whenever you're ready for that second side of the left leg going in through into that pigeon shape. Pause for a little while with the arch to include that psoas stretch, the front of the hip. And a nice inhale. And you're ready, easing down, sleeping pigeon. Any breathing that helps us out here. Exhale, let's start to take our recovery pose, get kneeling, get down dog. Good. 
Eventually work our way down to sit. Couple of breaths with cobbler once again, helping those hips open. If any neck tightness, feel free to include that. And rising up enough that the right leg can open out wide to the right. From there, you've got a choice. You can either just find the floor and ease your way directly forward, or from that spot, if you want to work your way a bit closer toward the straight leg, that's another option. So just work on the spots that need it the most here. We'll start to switch our legs out. Same thing, maybe you just go directly forward or maybe you know you want to go toward the straight leg. Personal choice here. Deep cleansing breaths. As we make our way up, we'll head towards Shavasana. If there's any last stretches you need before that point, feel free to take it. Anything that helps your energy clear out Never a rush to get to Shavasana, it's only when you're ready. But when you make your way there, be playful with the breath. Try to find a breath for you that helps it feel like it's just cleansing your entire system, each and every inhale and exhale that flows through you.
Starting to allow our inhales and our exhales to lengthen. Stretching it out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. We're ready to take a nice fetal position off to one side. Imagine that this is your chance to kind of redo waking up this morning. Whatever energies you took on, whatever it felt like to shut that alarm off. Imagine all that's gone. It's just us waking up here and now. So pause for a few breaths to kind of energize your system, to prepare your system, to help yourself feel this excitement for the day to come. Maybe another two or three breaths, whatever you need until you feel ready to rest. So as we're here with our hands in front of our heart, just feel this blank slate that we have. So much potential for what we can do with the rest of this day. So much creative power within us. So many words yet to be spoken. So many deeds yet to be done. So many thoughts yet to be thought. And so with this power we have to shape our day in amazing ways, to turn this blank slate into our highest and best day that we can imagine, this blank slate to carry us on, let's wrap up the time we got to share together today with the sound of home. Deep inhale now. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.